HRV, heart rate variability. What's going on guys? Wes with another whoop breakdown. And if you're new to the channel, I don't just do whoop videos. I focus on any health, wellness, fitness, tech products by giving an objective perspective, uh, by using any underlying intellectual property, clinical studies, or any other things I can find to give us as the consumers the best perspective possible when we want to lay down our hard-earned money and buy these products. But once a month, I'm dedicating a video to what I think is the most innovative and best fitness tracker out there today, and in hopes that we, using the device, can better understand and interpret our data. That way we can become healthier individuals all around. So today's video is about HRV. And if you're not using a whoop strap, there's a good chance that your fitness device doesn't track it. And if it does track it, it's got some inconsistencies day to day, or it's hidden deep in the app, like the Apple Watch, where you actually have to go hunting for it in the iPhone app. All right, so let's get into it. Why is HRV important? I'm sure you know what heart rate is. So if you have a BPM of 60, that means your heart is beating 60 times in any given minute, but it's not beating on the second every second. There's a variability in between. And why is there a variability? The parasympathetic and the sympathetic. The parasympathetic is responsible for the conservation and restoration of energy in the body. It's responsible for things like digestion. And then we have the sympathetic, which is our fight or flight response. When we're working out, it's going to increase the heart rate, where parasympathetic decreases the heart rate. And because these two systems are in a constant battle fighting for energy in our body, we're always going to have variability in our heart rate. And when one dominates the other, for example, if we're working out, we can expect the sympathetic system to have more control and that variability is going to reduce in our heart. And then if we have Thanksgiving dinner, our parasympathetic is going to take control and we're going to lower our HRV. And also things like mental stress can have effect on this because of your increased cortisol levels, that's going to really dominate one of the systems over the other. So there's this constant battle between these. So in understanding all of that, it's got to be the miracle metric when understanding day to day, because if your body's too stressed, whether mentally or physically, you're going to expect a low HRV. If your diet is bad, if you're not drinking enough water, you can expect a low HRV because these systems are very sensitive to what we're doing to it day to day. And because of that, it's the reason why Will Ahmed, the inventor and founder of Whoop, made it the focal point for the Whoop strap. Now, one important thing to understand is that HRV is very individualized. And when using things that can compare yourself to others, like when you're looking through the statistics of the Whoop strap and you're in these groups, you can't compare your HRV to another person because there's a bunch of reasons why your HRV may be different from others. A big thing is genetics. There's also whether you're male or female and your age. As we get older, our HRV is going to decrease because of the degradation of our bodies. So let's get into why the whoop strap is the best for this. Number one is recovery score. HRV is one of three metrics that make up whoops proprietary recovery score. It's going to be the resting heart rate, the sleep performance, and then HRV. And in doing this, you can compare it day to day because when you get the whoop strap, what it does is it does a lot of calibration to set a baseline of this metric. Because if you're using another device and you just see an HRV number, well, how does that compare to the previous day? Or how does that compare to my overall health? Well, because it's a metric that is enveloped into this recovery score, that gives us an easy to see and plain as day metric to see how our performance is being affected day to day. Number two is third party validation. Now, if I browse the forums of Reddit, I can see that a lot of people have issues and question the heart rate. Well, that's gonna be an issue because of how these smart devices, including what I think is the best smartwatch out there, the Apple Watch, measure our heart rate. And it's not actually measuring the beats in our wrist. It's through something called photo plus this is a very hard word to say, photoplethysmography, or much easier to say PPG, because I don't even know if I said that word right. And what it does, it measures the blood in our skin by the LED lights, and it takes it as feedback, and it does a lot of interpretation of what your heart rate is. But one thing's for sure about the Whoop strap is that it's gone through third-party validation that has been confirmed 
Number three is exactly how the whoop strap measures HRV. And that is a consistent day-to-day -day measurement and the last stage of your slow wave sleep. And why does it do that? Well, stepping back from the whoop strap, when I was using the Apple Watch and trying to measure my HRV, it was done any which way throughout the day. And it's done through the breathing app because you gotta sit still for it to take a consistent measurement of your HRV. But there's so many variables throughout the day that can affect your HRV. Did I just eat and do in the breathing app? Was I just highly stressed? Did I just go through some sort of action that would affect and increase or decrease my HRV? It's just too much. And you can also do things to increase your HRV somewhat artificially. You can game the system and that's not something you wanna do because the only thing you're doing is you're cheating yourself. So why the last stage of the slow wave sleep? So when we're sleeping in this eight hour window, this last stage gave us enough upfront time to recover our body as much as possible, possibly digest a late dinner or possibly recover from a late workout or whatever. Also, it's our body is just completely dead during this stage. If you ever wake up groggy, it's because you're coming out of this deep, slow wave sleep. So we're laying still, there should be nothing that's affecting it. Our heart rate shouldn't be going up or down. And that way it can give a good consistent measurement. And because it does it every day, it's a reliable metric to measure day to day. And number four, because HRV is so individualized, Whoop does an excellent job in calibrating and understanding through the initial period, okay, this is my HRV. If it stated that, okay, we're assuming that a healthy HRV is 40 and it's gonna compare your metrics off of that, then that's not really fair in understanding our own bodies. So because of the calibration and the individualized metrics, that makes Whoop the ultimate tracker of HRV out there today. So those are the big reasons why I think the whoop strap is the best in measuring what I believe is the miracle metric in understanding our bodies. So now that we understand why it's important, why we care about it, why whoop is good for it, what can we do to improve it? For example, exercise and training. It's been shown that people that have increased their cardiovascular health have a better HRV, but overtraining can also decrease your HRV because you're constantly putting your body in stress and it's having to dedicate a lot of resources to recovering your body. So again, that relates to the recovery score that I absolutely love. If it's a low recovery, maybe take the day off. If it's a high recovery, go for it. Good nutrition, avoiding inflammatory foods, not eating too close to bedtime like I mentioned before because a lot of these things can affect your cardiovascular health and have a negative effect on your HRV which relates to a decrease in your overall health. Hydration, the more liquids you have in your body, the better your heart's gonna be pumping and the better for your system all around. Alcohol, I mean, alcohol's a downer. It's going to affect your heart negatively. I don't know how many times I've drank one or too many and woken up with a low recovery score and seeing my HRV huge percentage points below my baseline. And it's not the greatest thing to see. And I'm not saying don't drink, it's just do precautionary things like drink more water or don't drink as much and then make sure to get plenty of sleep, which is the next thing to do, which is sleeping well, because the better your body recovers while you're sleeping and you're getting your REM, your deep sleep, the better your heart health is gonna be. There's also things like cold thermogenesis, you know, get in the shower and just shock your system. And then lastly, and this is the biggest thing that I've had to do, it's breath work, mindfulness, meditation. Now as, I don't wanna say somewhat of a meathead, a lot of focus is put on my physical well-being, but not so much my mental. But mental has a huge effect. When we're stressed, we're doing things to our heart that we just usually don't measure. And you can see that in the whoop strap. So one thing to do is just to take deep breaths, work on that mental health, meditate, and even take a gratitude journal because when you're rushed with endorphins, your heart health is going to improve. And that's it. Before the whoop strap, HRV was kind of a side thing that I would see, but I never fully understand how it can be related. I mean, there's a lot of clinical studies out there that are showing it's related to mortality and morbidity as well. If you see a lower HRV in a patient, there could be indications of some issues with the heart. And they're continuing to do more and more research on that. The biggest issue has been the day-to-day -day monitoring of someone's HRV. And one thing that we as people do and our mind is really good at is compensating. We may wake up and feel amazing, 
but then we look at our HRV is low. So then we're thinking, well, there must be something wrong with the whoop strap. And we have to exercise a lot of humility and rely on the metrics because they are, for the most part, going to be pretty accurate. Now, there's going to be some outliers out there, I fully understand, but... But we can't assume that something's wrong with the strap just because we feel different. It's just how our bodies work of the overcompensation. It's a survival method. And we're becoming bigger, faster, stronger, and living longer than our ancestors because we're having a better understanding of our bodies through devices like this. So again, if you like this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you loved it. There's gonna be once a month videos. The next one's gonna be a recovery score to talk about the two other things of the recovery score, which is resting heart rate and sleep performance in conjunction with HRV. And I'll be going more in depth into that, but there's also gonna be other reviews. Like I'm gonna be reviewing exactly why the Theragun is an innovative product when it comes to massage guns coming up. Uh, I'll be reviewing this chair and a number of other things. If you have any suggestions or questions, hit me up in the comments, follow me on Instagram for more content and more interaction. And that's it, later.